Hey guys, it's Jess with Oak and Grain. Welcome back. I have an incredible vanity makeover plan for you guys today. So let's jump right in and show you the step-by-step -step of how I gave this vanity the most elegant makeover I've ever done. This is my client's vintage makeup vanity that she brought me to refinish. It's actually in really good condition for its age and I absolutely love all of the ornate details. The drawers will need a little bit of cleaning up and the stool will certainly need to be repolstered, which is gonna be a new skill I'll have to learn. And I'm not really sure what to do with these broken springs on the bottom, but I'm going to take you along. And if this sounds fun and you like these kind of makeovers, definitely hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. Here she is again in all of her glory, mirror included, which will have to be replaced. This was a particularly musty smelling piece, so I'm just sprinkling in some baking soda, which I'll leave in for the duration of my project. This will really help absorb a lot of the odors. Before moving on to cleaning, I'm gonna remove all of the hardware, and I keep it in a container or a plastic bag just to keep it all in one place so I don't lose any pieces. Once all of the hardware was removed, I'm going to move on to the cleaning step using my favorite degreaser crud cutter and this new drill attachment. This brush is fantastic for getting into all of those nooks and crannies, which I found particularly helpful for this piece with all of its details. Once it was all scrubbed down with degreaser, I wiped it clean using warm water and rags. Typically I do several rounds of cleaning, essentially until the bucket of water I'm using is still clear by the end. Here I'm vacuuming out the drawer pockets and wiping them down as well with degreaser. In addition to the baking soda trick, this step is also very helpful in eliminating odors. Moving on to the stool, I'm unscrewing the bottom screws to separate the upholstered part from the frame. Once it was unscrewed, everything came off very easily. I've never reupholstered before, so I'm gonna have to set this one aside and do some research and I'll come back to it later. Having the frame detached from the upholstered part made it really easy to clean and I just repeated the same steps with the crud cutter and my wet rag. Here's a great example of how important it is to clean your pieces. This was after the second cleaning round and required two more. Next I'm taping the back of the hardware holes to prevent sanding dust, paint, and primer from getting into the drawers. I've shown you this trick before. Here I'm making little tape tabs so I can easily open and close the drawers during the remainder of my prep phase. As I'm putting the drawers back in, I'm taking note of any necessary repairs. As you can see here, this drawer sits back a little too far, so using a piece of scrap wood, I mark the excess depth with a pen and I'll make a cut here with my saw. Taking the little block of wood I just cut, I first dry fit it in the drawer pocket, setting it back here where the drawer makes contact. Once I know it's a good fit, which in this case it was, you can see the drawers align really nicely, I'll then go on to gluing it into the back and repeating this step for any other drawers that also set back a little too far. Once I had the drawers all aligned, I attempted to remove these details with the intent of keeping them natural and making sanding, priming, and painting a whole lot easier. However, after breaking several of the pieces, I threw out that plan and decided to just tape off any of the remaining details that I wanted to keep that natural wood color. And this seems to be a fairly common theme. Here I am repairing all of the pieces that I broke essentially just making more work for myself, but that's okay. You live and you learn. Mm -hmm. 
As you can see here, there were several wooden drawer details missing, as well as half of this wooden detail that attached to the top of the mirror. To reproduce these pieces, I used this amazing mold putty on existing pieces that I wanted to duplicate. I considered spraying the details with cooking spray before applying, but the mold has a greasy enough feel that the additional lubrication definitely wasn't needed. After about 15 minutes, the mold was cured and I filled the mold using quick wood. As for this piece, I attempted to make a mold using the same approach and this time filling with Bondo, thinking there would be a way I could mirror the image. It turned out great, but here you can really see my wheels turning. I turn my brain inside out and upside down, but turns out it's impossible to make a mirrored image from a mold like this. This was as good as I could get it to look. Yet another hurdle in this project I will have to revisit later. So I'm just moving on to taping off all the details I plan to keep natural. Over the more ornate details, I'm using a box cutter to trim the excess tape for a perfect curved coverage. I realize I'm scratching the wood up a little bit here, but I'm not too worried about it because I plan on painting this anyway. Now I'll be moving on to sanding. I always wear an N95 mask or higher and ear protection. These headphones double as Bluetooth headphones, which I really love. Using my Surf Prep 3x4 electric ray, I'm just scuff sanding. The goal of scuff sanding is to give it some tooth for better adhesion, not necessarily to sand down to the raw wood. For scuff sanding, I typically use a 220 grit. Originally, my client and I had talked about keeping the top natural, but it was veneer, which can be kind of finicky when sanding down and restaining. Plus, I wasn't so sure about this natural wood grain pattern here. I'll let you gather your own opinions. Next I'm moving on to the contoured edges. I'll be using a half inch foam pad. These are great for hugging all those curves. I'm using the same scuff sanding method for the stool and the mirror as well. Someone is not so subtly hinting that it is time to call it a night. It must be dinner time. We'll have to pick this back up tomorrow. The next day, when everything I could reach with the vanity upright was sanded down, I turned the piece over on its back using some dollies. This made it much easier to sand down the legs and the underside of the middle. This step is completely optional, but I opted to tape off the bottom for a really clean look without overspray. And one last step before we get to priming, I'm just removing the backing of the mirror so we can keep that nice and clean as well. I definitely would not want to mess up this original marking. I think this is so cool. Here I'm just rolling up my staging floor. 
and tidying up my workspace to reduce dust before I move on to spraying. Then I'll lay down a canvas tarp and hang the other one by nailing it to my garage wall. I love that these are washable and reusable. To remove any last bits of sanding dust, I'm wiping down the entire piece with 50-50 water and denatured alcohol using a lint-free cloth. The DNA evaporates really quickly and leaves you with a squeaky clean surface ready for primer. For primer, I love this Kills Restoration Primer. It's water-based which makes cleanup so easy, especially when using a sprayer. But it performs like a shellac which is really good at blocking bleed through. I aim to water it down about to the consistency of a polyurethane, which is about 10 to 20%, but to be honest, I don't always measure. For this entire project, I'll be using my HVLP sprayer. I'll link it in the descriptions. This one's really great, super easy to use, and really inexpensive at about $100. Using my sprayer, this probably took me about 15 to 20 minutes to spray the entire set. You can see the areas where it's really doing its job of blocking the wood tannins. We'll let this dry for about an hour. Once the primer was all dry, I flipped over the stool to coat the top, but I'm not planning on doing a second coat of white primer, and I'll show you why in a second. Here's a great close-up of some of the open grain that I plan on filling. This step is totally optional. Sometimes it's really cool to see open grain through the paint, but in this case, I want a super sleek finish. So I'm just going through with my wood putty and filling any of the open grain as well as some imperfections. Grain filling on larger areas, I take a few clumps of wood putty, water it down to a paste-like consistency, and paint it on using a chip brush. Here you can see a little bit of dripping. This was a little too thin and I had to thicken it up by adding a little more putty. Here's what it looked like with all the grain and imperfections filled. Once all the putty was dry, I sanded again using a 220 grit until everything was nice and smooth. To remove all the sanding dust, I wiped it down with a lint-free cloth. This is a great opportunity to find any little filled spots you may have missed when sanding. If I was painting in a light color, I would add another coat of white primer, but in this case I'm going to prime in black because I'm going a dark color. I like to first start with white primer though because it really highlights imperfections and open grain, but the black primer will help with coverage and allow me to use less paint. And I'm going to be using the same HVLP sprayer here. Once dry, I flipped over the stool to coat the top. One coat was sufficient, making a total of two primer coats. Before moving on to paint, I'm sanding down the primer with a very fine rad pad to give me a really smooth finish. Rad pads are a great hand sanding foam pad made by Surf Prep. And just like I did before priming, I'm wiping down with 50-50 water and denatured alcohol to remove any of the sanding dust. 
For paint, I'm gonna be using One Hour Enamel in Jet Black. I love this paint so much, it does not require a top coat and is super durable. I know it's kind of tough to see where the paint is being sprayed, but I'm just trying to follow the wet line and overlap by 50% with each pass. Here I'm using a piece of cardboard to block overspray from getting into the drawer pockets. I ended up doing a total of two coats of the Wise Owl One Hour Enamel Paint. When the paint was dry, which only takes about one hour with this paint, I removed the tape over the natural details. In some spots, the tape left a little paint groove, which I lightly sanded down using a 320 grit. Using a tack cloth, I removed all of the sanding dust and moved on to gluing the remaining wooden details back on. Remember those molds I made out of quick wood? I gave them a light sand to remove the slight ridge left from overfilling the mold. I then had to color match them to the other wooden details. To accomplish this, I first made some streaks using these Varathane stain markers to give it a woody texture. After some trial runs on scrap wood, I found that then layering on General Finishes Gel Stain in Antique Walnut gave me the best match. The mold actually did a great job of capturing some of the wood grain textures and the stain layering really helped to give it a natural look. Using a really thin layer of glue, I glued them back on to complete the faux wood details. There were some spots where my sander took off some of the stain early on in my scuff sanding steps, so I'm just using those same Varathane markers to bring back some color and blend it into the original stain. Next, using a detail brush, I'm going through and cleaning up the edges where I had to sand down the little paint grooves left from the tape. In my original design plan, I had planned to keep the top drawers natural, but I really wasn't happy with the look, so I ended up priming and painting them. There are so many times when I change my design based on what is or isn't working for the piece, so feel free to give yourself a little grace and be flexible with your design. I then glued the wooden details back onto the top drawers using a really thin layer of glue. Now moving on to this stool, I think I mentioned I had never reupholstered before, so I did a little research and got some help from fellow refinishers, one in particular being Chanel from Handmade Home. I'll be sure to link her channel in the description. I started by removing the existing fabric and cushion, which was pretty yucky. It definitely showed its age. As for the broken springs, I ended up just removing these with a painter's tool. I didn't think that they were salvageable. When 
Once everything was removed, I just cleaned up my workspace with my vacuum and ended up removing the remainder of the little upholstery nails. As you can imagine, the upholstery nails and debris went flying everywhere, so I just tidied up my dining room space before moving back out into the garage to cut a new seat. Since I removed the springs, I needed to add something back to actually sit on. I'm just using a sheet of plywood for my new seat, and I sanded down the edges nice and round to match the shape of the original stool frame. To secure the new seat to the frame, I'm using wood glue and four screws for the corners. I then gathered all the supplies for the reupholstering, which included one inch foam, batting, fabric I surprisingly found at my farmer's market, scissors, and a staple gun. I started by laying out and trimming the batting so that it was long enough on all edges to cover the edges of the foam. Because I had to use two separate pieces, I have this seam in the middle, and to mitigate the lump, I'm just tearing off thin layers of the batting to overlap the seam. And this is actually a trick I learned from my emergency medicine job in casting and splinting. I'm next just picking apart the edges to feather them out for a really smooth transition. Now for the fun part, I'm laying out my fabric and trimming it down to size, but giving myself plenty of wiggle room on those edges. Pulling the fabric nice and taut, I'm stapling along the longer edges before moving on to the short edges. I highly recommend investing in an electric staple gun. This thing really hurt my hand and was kind of hard to use, honestly. As you can see, I didn't staple too close to the corners and left them flared out for this next step. Slightly turning the corner inside out, I trimmed down the batting and the foam if needed. I then pulled the corner of the fabric to the center of the stool and placed a single staple here. Next, I trim the excess corner material by cutting out a square which allows the remaining corners to fold over very nicely on one another, making this nice, neat little triangle. Once all of my corners were stapled down, I just trimmed off any excess from the edges, and there you have it! My first stool, reupholstered! I screwed the cushion back onto the stool frame, and here's how she looks. I'm actually really happy with it. Next, moving on to the hardware, I'm boiling in one parts water to vinegar for about 10 minutes. Then using fine steel wool and barkeeper's friend, I'm polishing them up back to their original golden shine. And here's a nice before and after. For this mirror, I went to my local glass shop and they replaced it for just about $100. Revisiting this broken detail, I reached out to a 3D printing company who quoted me $460 for this. Instead, a lot of my friends on Instagram recommended wood appliques, so I purchased several off of Amazon and picked one that fit the piece best. Using a mixture of stains, I stained the applique to coordinate with the other natural details on the piece. Once the stain was dry, I sealed it with a clear shellac before attaching it to the mirror using a little bit of wood glue and clamps.
I then reinforced it with a few brad nails. For the last finishing touches, I reattached the original polished up hardware and finally vacuumed out the baking soda, which did a really good job absorbing a lot of those odors. To really take the interior of the drawers to the next level, I freshened them up using a little bit of furniture salve and a palm brush. I'm always amazed by how much better it looks after this very simple step. And here's the final look. I learned so many new skills on this piece from making molds to using wood appliques to reupholstering. This was such a fun project. I am so pleased with how much of the original charm was preserved while still giving it a nice elegant refresh. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. So there you have it. Thank you so much for joining me for yet another fun furniture makeover. If you want to see more videos like this, definitely hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified so you never miss a video, go ahead and hit the notification bell as well. I'll see you guys next time for another furniture flip.